our bedrooms should be a sanctuary with relaxing at the forefront of our mind. But often we have a bedside table, cabinet or nightstand that is anything but calming. Today we're going to talk about the 10 things to declutter from your bedside table. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organising your home. Now here are your hosts, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you're new to the Declutter Hub podcast, you're so welcome. What you'll find is that we try and find a fun factor in the serious business of decluttering. And if you've been here for a while, you know exactly what we mean. So thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get involved in conversations relating to this podcast, it all takes place in our Facebook group. So come and join our lovely, warm, supportive community. To find the Facebook group, go to declutterhub.com forward slash group to find out more or you can search for the declutter hub community on facebook well hello listeners we are back with a brand new episode and we're going to talk about 10 things to declutter from your bedside table it's a 10 things podcast it's never happier than a 10 things podcast are you (laughs) i love a 10 things podcast but before we do that we have to share with you the wonderful comment that we got from Barbara, right, Leslie? Yeah, we did a podcast a few weeks ago, episode 244. So that's kind of nine podcasts ago or 10 podcasts ago, actually. 10 things, 10 podcasts ago. It's kind of all my result. <laughs> anyway, yes, Barbara was commenting on episode 244. So that's like 10 podcasts ago. And that was a podcast all about how to create like your lasting legacy. So what to do to make sure that everything is in order and people remember things about you and important things once you have passed away. So Barb, it really resonated with her. She said, thank you for tackling this important area in your usual warm and friendly way. I was challenged by the idea of shredding those journals that have meant so much to me but are private and marked with a red dot to be shredded when I die. Perhaps I can reread them and decide whether I'm comfortable with family knowing more about who and what sustained me through dark days. I am keeping a loose leaf notebook of photos and family heirlooms and the stories behind them. This is one of your best ever podcasts, bringing in your experiences and families with sensitivity to different experiences of the generations. Thank you so much, Barbara. We're we're so delighted. I mean, it's lovely to get messages from listeners anyway, isn't it, Leslie? But how nice to say this is one of your best podcasts ever. It was a hard podcast to record. So uh, it's really nice to hear that Barbara enjoyed it. And I think, you know, Ingrid, as well as knowing that people have enjoyed the podcast, I think it's it's lovely to hear what people are doing as, as a kind of ongoing action or how people are thinking about it and what they want to do as a result of listening to the podcast. So Barbara's got her ideas about what she's going to do. So it's kind of reset her thinking or re- reframed her thinking a little bit. And I think that's nice as well. So it's not just about, I mean, though we love a bit of Ingrid and Leslie love, of course we do, but actually it's so nice to know what got, what you guys are doing as a result yeah. of the podcast. So keep those comments, reviews coming. We love them. Yes, yes. And don't forget to hit that follow button in your podcast player. So you're not going to miss out on one of your best podcasts ever. Maybe because something, maybe something else resonates with you. So if you hit that follow button, you're not going to miss a weekly episode that comes out every Friday. Or of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Now, Leslie, 10 things to declutter from your bedside table slash nightstand slash cabinet different words for the same thing it's a little table next to your bed that can become an utter dumping ground we've decluttered many bedside tables and you wonder like how does stuff end up here i 
I could have thought about at least another four or five things that I found as well. <laughs> I know Ingrid was disappointed that we could only have 10, to be fair. Um, I think, you know, it's interesting because we were looking and as we always do or often do on these podcasts, and we look at terminology around the world and whether it's different to what we would call it in uh, the UK. So we would typically call it a bedside table or a bedside cabinet. Now, to us, a bedside table would be just that. It would be a table with maybe a tiny little drawer underneath it, just under the kind of top of the table. A cabinet would be more something that either has a cupboard or drawers underneath it, which we are big fans of when it comes to people that have a lot of clutter because it gives you that extra bit of storage. And it's something that a lot of people omit and they have these overflowing bedside tables. And actually, they could fix that problem a little bit with a drawer and it could go nice and neatly in a drawer. And I believe that a nightstand is that very thing in um, US English, isn't it? It is a bedside cabinet i believe i know it's it's very it's easy to get confused about this terminology but i think we got there in the end it's like the place next to your bed that ends up with lots of random stuff <laughs> you know it's a bit like a, it's a bit like a, a an understairs cupboard isn't it you know yeah. once you start it's a bit like a tardis it's like so much in there isn't there so many random bits and pieces because we want to be safe and secure and calm when we're in bed and we want to have things close to hand we get nervous about getting ill in the night you know there's a little it's a bit dark and so we want everything really kind of easy to get but sometimes we can have way too much stuff and what we don't want to do is end up rummaging through it as if it was almost like a junk drawer to find what we need. So we love a bit of containerization. We love a bit of organization. We definitely love decluttering and we like some categorization. But before we get on to all that, we're going to talk about the things that yes. cause these clutter problems in bedside tables. I'm going to kick off with number one, Leslie, unread books. I think we think if we put them on our bedside table, we're going to magically read all these things. And some people, as soon as they hit the pillow, boom, they're fast asleep. Now, I am not one of these people. But even then, just have the book that you're reading because everything else is like, oh, there's another job that I haven't done yet. There's a whole stack of books that I haven't gotten around to yet. Can I just stop you? Can I just stop you, Ingrid? Because I seem to recall... Not very long ago when we did a podcast about books, right? Mm -hmm. That you told me that you had several books on the go at once. Well, that's in my Kindle. Oh, in your Kindle. So oh. I've just got a Kindle and I've got a little puzzle book because I love doing what do you Sudoku. Sudo Sudoku. Sud Sudokus, yeah. So okay. yeah. And I've, I've got and I've got a magazine. And I've got a magazine. That's oh, it. Oh, 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 it's coming out now. So <laughs> you've already admitted to three different types. So they'll give you that they are different things. Yeah, they're different. But that's things. okay. I mean, you've said unread books, Ingrid, but also read books, right? Books that you've also read. Yes, that is true. That is true. Also I mean, just books. <laughs> books. People have like stacks of them. I mean, yeah. I I'm looking at my husband here as well. I'm like, I'm going to give him the, the eyes through the podcast. Like, just please. I'm like, I've told him, why is there eight or nine books on your bedside table? Well, I'm going to read them. I'm like, they've been there like, I don't know how long. Just please. Just anyway. <laughs> We're going to go ranting now about books. But books, yeah, keep them to a minimum because it's yeah. not a nice look. What we're trying to create here. It's all about a compromise, right? Because we want to be comfortable. As we say, we want things accessible. We want to do what we want to do when we go to bed. But sometimes it's just a little bit too much and the yeah. calming element of it disappears. So we're not saying you only need one book by your bedside, like in a sort of military way. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying evaluate. I think this podcast will very much be about evaluating because so many people have got so many different ways that they do the things that we're going to talk about and there's not a one size fits all but what we'd like you to do as a result of this podcast is take a little bit of action delve in to the depths of where you've not gone for a while and go do I actually need all this stuff the answer to that might be yes and if it is that's fine at least you've looked and you've taken things out but I bet you bottom dollar that there are things in there that you don't need and I bet there are with many many people a few excess books Yes. Well, I, and I'm going to move on to number two, Leslie. 
excessive charges and cables. Wow, I know that's where the the, the the cable spaghetti comes in. Things get tangled. Then there's of course there's the the charger. Then there's the backup charger. Then there's a charger of a phone that nobody knows anymore what it's for. Then there's some other random cables that kind of ended up somewhere in your bedside table because you thought it might be important. And before you know it, you've got spaghetti, and it's like. I don't even know. I just want to have a charger that works. That's all I want. Do you know what the nice thing is these days about chargers is that as 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 kind of technology moves on and chargers are just something that we need in our life, right? Whether we like that, they are really annoying, aren't they? Because they're kind of big and they fall over and they flop down and all that kind of stuff. People have thought about very clever solutions for chargers. And so, and it's something that I I don't want to take my phone off the cable and then the cable fall behind the bedside <laughs> cabinet, right? I'm, I'm, are you with me? That's yeah, the problem. Yeah. So I made sure that I've got a, a kind of stand for my phone and I've got, a, and I, so I've got my phone, I've got my Apple watch that go on uh, charge every night, uh, nothing else on my bedside table because I don't need anything else there. Although I've, got, I've still got chargers downstairs, you know, for different things, what headphones and all that kind of stuff. But I've made sure that I've got a nice, neat little charger. You can get combined ones. You can get ones that charge the phone, your watch, and AirPods. Like, so Apple, if you've got a phone, AirPods, and it's the same. It's not just Apple stuff, and a watch. So whatever the equivalent of that is, you get a nice little neat thing for maybe like £20, something like that. And I know it's a lot of money, but if it fixes that problem that's kind of continually annoying you because yeah. you keep losing your cables then yeah. it's worth it there's little things that kind of hook onto the side of your bedside cabinets to keep the cables from falling down you know so there's loads of different solutions so if it's something that's been bothering you and you're like it's so annoying that that thing you keep doing it over and over <laughs> and over and over again don't you yeah several yeah. times a night right as you put your plummy phone in they set your phone out it falls down retrieve pull back you can help yourself with these fantastic ideas and innovations that people have got. Yeah, Pop yeah. It, take a look on Amazon or wherever you get your stuff and you will find something in a moment. Yes, exactly. I'm going to move on to number three, Leslie, because I think this is the first thing I thought about when we thought about this topic. I'm like, this is the thing, old medications. All over it when you were all over old, old medications. I know, but it's because I find it all the time. And it's like, what's this? It's like, oh, and then you check the dates on the medications like paracetamol from like four years ago. And I'm like, okay, let's make sure that we get that back to the pharmacies and they can destroy it securely. Or, you know, you sometimes people end up, unfortunately, having to take several bits of medication and they change and then they forget that they've still got the old medication in their bedside table and then things get muddled. And then it's, you know, especially at night because it's darker, you probably won't have a massive light on in your bedroom when you're trying to go to sleep. So you, it's kind of tricky to see. You're going to have to rummage through a little bit. So I think really old medications, unless you really have to take it when you're in bed with a glass of water or something, that medications could live there. But all that excess or outdated stuff needs to be taken out. I think it comes to a wider conversation really about medications and whatever kind of medications you're on. And that looks very different for, for different people. You know, you and I have probably got five or six different types of medication because we don't have any ailments as such that we need to take medication for. But other people have got maybe 20, 25, 30 different things that they're, mm -hmm. they're having to manage. I've got only one, Leslie. I'm still, I'm still in my prime health. <laughs> I know, but you must have like, you, I bet you don't just have one. Like you, you don't just have one. You'll have like vapor rub, and you'll have some bungel oh, in there. Oh, yes. Oh, that's don't yeah. try and make it out that you're a beacon of health, and you only need one paracetamol every six months. <laughs> All right, I'm healthy too, but you know, but you do have things that you have to like. No, but I thought you were thinking about things you get from like the doctor. I've got like one, but yes, of course, I've got a bit of paracetamol and those kinds of bits. Of course, I've got a little cupboard in my kitchen where it where it all is. I don't even have medication in my bedside table. I've got one thing in my bathroom and that's it. I know. And, and, and we're lucky because we're yeah. in very good health, but people that are not, it, it's important to have a handle yes. on your medications in probably no more than two areas in your home and make sure that you continually have got that throughput, that you make sure that medications are not going to waste. That's yeah. something that we see all the time, you know, places where you pay for that medication. I mean, I don't know whether it's worse or, you know, the NHS we get, it's not free kind of 
sort of cheaper, perhaps medication in a lot of places, but it's still costing someone, somewhere, us, taxpayers. And so it's really important to not waste good medication that costs money. Yeah. And so we we have a, a duty a duty to do that, I think, as well, don't we? And we don't want these things going back into um into the environment as well. So make sure that when we've got those medications that we're kind of using them or taking them back to the pharmacy where they came and disposing of them sustainably. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to talk about number four, Leslie, another really good one, I think. And that is lots of beauty products. So we find creams and night creams and hand cream and foot cream and eye cream and you know other things, a beauty stuff in bedside tables. Lots of it. We do, but I, you know, as I look at it, I kind of in a way, I wish that I did have that stuff and did do that stuff. Because I might look a little bit different to what I look today if I was putting a foot cream and a hand Bye, cream Leslie. and an eye cream and a this cream and this mask. And maybe I might have turned out a little bit differently at 54 than I am today. Do you know what I mean? So much as I go, you don't need all that stuff. I look at the people who are using all that stuff and perhaps they look a little bit more youthful. So who are we to say, you know? Who Leslie, we say? I've got to hold my hand up. I've got one hand cream in my bedside table. I might as well recycle it because it's been. I know, but I, I have as well. I've literally, I like, I feel like this is like we're completely going against our own advice. It's completely aspirational. I've literally got a lip balm and a hand cream and an eye cream next to my bed in a little nice little container thing that's probably been there like two and a half years since the last year got in my bedside table in the hope that one day I'm going to go, do you know what? i put a little bit of eye cream on tonight and who knows what I'm going to look like tomorrow all refreshed. So again, Everyone is different. There are some people that love to do that stuff, love to pamper themselves, and that's part of their nighttime routine. But again, look about whether it's a little bit excessive, because typically if people are very focused on beauty and um, grooming and all those kind of things that Ingrid and I clearly are not, then there'll probably be an excess as well. I mean, we've got an excess and we've not put an eye cream on for the last, since the 1970s. <laughs> 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 well, you still look fab, Leslie. I mean, uh, if, uh, but I can I mean, always I, rely on you. I can always rely on it's you. The, maybe it's the Zoom filter <laughs> that's tricking. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's the Zoom filter that's tricking everyone. <laughs> anyway, we're getting right. we're, we're oh getting my, this now already. We're running. We need to calm down a little bit. We need to calm what down. About ten things podcast that makes us go like stir crazy <laughs> and like ridiculous and outrageous. No, I'm not doing another podcast, really. It's just the 10 things. There's something about it that makes us go slightly ridiculous. Maybe anyway. that's why I like them, because we laugh a lot of the time as well about the 10 things. But anyway, <laughs> we, have to, we have to come clean and be honest with you guys. I mean, I can sit there and go, no. I'm gonna, I mean, it's like it's just total lie. I've got a hand cream in my in my drawer that's been in there, I think, for about six years. It's about time I throw it away. Right. Um, number five. Uh, and then we can have a break after that and calm down a little bit. Okay, number five. <laughs> unnecessary paperwork things like receipts and notes and little scribbly bits and then maybe bits of unopened posts or open posts or half kind of still in in envelopes i mean lots of paperwork kind of bits come from bedside tables it, it must that must not be very relaxing <laughs> and i agree again i'm going to come back with a counter argument i think because one of the things that you're supposed to do if you can't sleep and you get these bright creative ideas or things that you remember or chores that you need to do that pop into your head while you're sleeping or before you go to sleep, you're supposed to write it down. Yeah, but I envisage that being written down in a nice notebook, not in some sort of on the back of a receipt from four years ago, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but you, so you've got like a little, you, so in your world, you've got a little notebook where you're no. writing these creative ideas that pop into your head. No, Leslie, time. my whole head is buzzing <laughs> after a day of working with you. I don't want to, I just want to do my Sudoku at night. I do not want to write <laughs> anything down anymore. So I have no, <laughs> no notebook with nothing next to my bed. Well, I don't either, but the consequence of that is that I, I'm awake at four o'clock with all these ideas and then I have to come down and start writing them down on my computer. So maybe I need a, few, a notepad next to my next to my bed. So 
But having said that, a notebook or somewhere to record your innermost sort of bright moments and bright ideas that come through in the middle of the night would be ideal if that's you and that's the kind of thing that makes you settle. But make sure that you're going through that stuff and taking it from that notepad, from that back of receipt, from that piece of paper, from where you've written it down in a magazine and taking it to that next stage, which is to put it on a to-do list, to put it in an ideas list, in a bullet journal, in a whatever you want to do. It has to go to that next stage. And I guess that's what we see in bedside tables, bedside cabinets, is that it's just a load of random stuff that got thought about in October the 31st, 2018, and has not really moved on. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah, I've, I really feel I have to calm down a little bit. So I think I suggest we go for a break and we can have a cup of tea and then we'll see you soon. Okay, right, everybody. Welcome back for your next part of the 10 Things Podcast. And of course, as per always, we were getting a bit too giddy. So we have hopefully calmed down a little bit and can chat to you sensibly. So it let's sound like it, does it? You can't even get your words out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to number six. This is another one we see a lot, jewelry and accessories. So kind of people, there, there are people who take off their jewelry next to their bed before they go to sleep. They're like, oh, I still have a bracelet on or a necklace or earrings or something. And then they've got this little pot on their bedside table where kind of it all lands. Maybe a pot, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. And then it kind of gets jumbled. Things get lost. Things lose their friends because they just kind of are chucked down there. And then it's it's tricky to then find it again. Also, loose buttons and things like that. I see as well a lot in bedside tables. Kind of when somebody's bought a new top and they've got like this little plastic sachet where they give you a spare button. It's like, oh, I don't know where to put it. Let me just put it in my bedside table. Yeah, and that's when it becomes like a junk drawer, right? Yeah. And so I think I think that all of these things that we're talking about, so what we're not saying is that you need to do these things. You know, you need to take your note and put it away once you've done it, or you need to, if you do take your jewelry off and you're in bed and you only just realised that it was on there, that you then got to get up and put it away. But all of these things should be part of your morning resets, okay? So we talk a lot about morning resets, evening reset, resets, weekly resets, this is part of a tidying up process to rehome things. So, because you want to make sure that the jewelry, if you want to go out a week later, that you've got a full range of jewelry to choose from. Or if it's in your bedside table, you'll sort of forget about it. And so make this part of your morning reset to reset your bedside table. We invariably will have things in our bedrooms overnight that we have used, but we just need to reset it in the morning to make sure that we're starting afresh every day. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Uh, number seven. Yes. Non-essential electronics. How many old smartphones have you found? Like like a Nokia or a Blackberry, you know, from like, yeah, 15, Blackberry, yeah. from like 15 years ago, together with the random chargers and plugs we talked about earlier. It's a whole thing because I, for some reason, we I think we think it's important or something and we just think, let's stuck it in a bedside table because then we know where it is. Yeah, I think I think there's a psychology there, isn't there, with these old phones that we think it's important information. We feel like we want to do something and we want to put it somewhere that we're going to know that it is. And so we keep it. And, and the shame about doing that is that these old phones, if you, you know, a lot of people change the phones after, I mean, you know, two years, three years, four years. I mean, most people probably change the phone within five years, don't they, Ingrid? And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, they still have value to somebody. So if you can, you know, take the information off them or, you know, move it from one device to another, and then you can recycle it, you can possibly make some money for from it, or you can send it to charity and it goes back into sort of circulation and doesn't because effectively whilst it's sitting if it's sitting in, next in your bedside cabinet for 10 years then it becomes kind of landfill and you can't do anything with it because it'll be too old and outdated to be able to do anything with it so yeah it has got another a second life potential and if you keep it in your bedside drawer then it kind of doesn't anymore right yeah Absolutely, absolutely. So yes, if you find those items, I mean, not easy. These are kind of tricky items to deal with because you do need to find that charger so you can plug it in and kind of turn it, try and see, can I still turn this on? Is there a battery in it? Is there still information on there? So it's a bit of a fiddly job, but having that in your bedside table is probably not the best place 
for it to move on on the on the action and to-do list. So yeah, probably... it needs to be, yeah, you're right, Ingrid. It needs to be the problem is the location of it isn't in an action-based place, is it? So oh. you know, wherever that is, you know, you'd be better off having it in your kitchen or your office or somewhere that you're gonna see it on a regular basis and do something with these things get buried in the bottom of drawers. It's not just yeah. bedside drawers, it's you know, other drawers in your bedroom, but often in your bedroom, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What a list, Leslie. What a list. Okay, let me go on to number eight. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is you. This is you, what you've just said. What do you mean? You admitted to this. Yeah, but I, I, I'm i not leaving them unfinished. I'm actually doing them. These are <laughs> un- unfinished projects like crafts and puzzles. But I do my little Sudoku every night, so it's not unfinished. But there's loads of people who've got stacks and stacks of... I'm going to read this. I'm going to, maybe it's also a bit like magazines and things like that. I see this at this kind of same category or, oh, I didn't finish that magazine yet. I still want to read that article. And then there's whole stacks and whole heaps of things. And, oh, I want to finish that puzzle in that, in that magazine or that newspaper. And you don't get around to it and it just all builds up. Definitely. So you're saying that you've not got any old Sudoku. So you discard it when it's all done, do you? Yes. The puzzle bot. And do you get to the end of the puzzle bot or do you leave some out? Well, I think I've got, yeah, I'm, I'm working my way through. I mean, I've, I've had my book like for ages. I'm like on puzzle 243 now and I do one every two nights or something. So it's been there for ages, but every night I just go on. It's keeping your brain active, Ingrid, isn't uh, it? I just love it. You could, trying to find the nine, then just the nine numbers. And then you're but like. Steve, Steve does them on his phone. Yeah. You've not moved on to your phone? No, but I, I leave my phone downstairs. I don't want my phone in my bedroom. So oh, you, I... wait, you wait till your kids get to a going out age. You won't have your phone downstairs anymore. Those <laughs> days will be numbered. I know. I know. I'm enjoying it while it lasts, Leslie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, anything that you've done with, you know, or halfway through, you know, but again, put it somewhere. It becomes like visual clutter and then, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah tricky. Yeah. Unfinished craft products products projects and puzzles yeah puzzle books magazines yeah. those kind of things now leslie the next one i want you to come clean but i actually don't know the answer to this number nine is bedside snacks do you eat snacks in your bed never me neither you see we're aligned again <laughs> i could not even like on mother's day right they bring you like this tray with this cup of tea and like something to eat and i'm like oh hi thanks i just don't <laughs> like eating in my bed i never have exactly i might do you know to be fair if i was in a hotel room a hotel's like different right yeah, you know if you're yeah, in a hotel yeah. room because you haven't got any other option apart from if yeah. you want a bar of chocolate or a glass of wine or something when you're in your bed then you've got to have it in bed really or Love there's like it. or there's like one nice chair and then you're with the two of you and one person sits in the chair and the other one has to sit on the bed. Yeah, so that's the only exception really. But even yeah. then, I don't I don't really align. I don't even really watch telly in bed either. No, me neither. Just, I do have a TV and I do sometimes, but literally I'm talking about six times a year that I might go. We are so similar, Leslie. It's like crazy because it's the same. We've got a little TV upstairs in our bedroom. And I can't even, the last year, I can't even remember. I, actually, we should declutter it. Why is it there? But it, never mind. I mean, but yeah, I just don't really. Because the thing is, as soon as you put the telly on the bedroom, you just stay awake watching telly. And then, I know. well, I really need to sleep because I go to bed far too late anyway. <laughs> I know. So we were talking about bedside snacks then. So yeah. we see a lot of those. Is it a good, is it a good habit is this something that we should talk about in decluttering podcasts whether or not people should eat snacks in bed maybe that's dangerous territory leslie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, we're not health coaches are yeah. we? you know to me yeah um but what we can talk about is um decluttering the excess so yeah. the um the boxes and bags of crisps and you know cans of coke and all that kind of <laughs> stuff when you finish with them to discard them as part of your morning reset and don't let them sit there for six months if they're going out a day and stuff like that. Um, 
We see it a lot, right? We see it a lot. No judgment here. If somebody wants to watch telly in bed and eat snacks in bed, you go for it. That's your, just as not weird like me and Ingrid, you were like, okay, now it is sleep time and we are going to go to sleep. <laughs> you know what? I think if I would eat like chocolates and crisps and and, and, and soft drinks before I go to bed, I can never sleep. I'm really bouncing up for myself. I uh, go my, for- my concern, Ingrid, is not that my concern is if I eat, chocolate and sweets and those kind of things when I was in bed as well as when I was not I'd be like this would not be a good thing at all like at least there's a cutoff point sometimes I go to bed if I'm on a diet I go to bed so I don't eat anymore it's the only thing that's going to stop me but anyway so bedside snacks um, oh my gosh we're not doing very very better on this side of the podcast are we after our break we're getting a bit rowdy and crazy again yeah all right. Only one more left. One left. Number 10, minimize your decorative items. I mean, by all means, have a lovely little thing, but we see some beds at tables with like flowers and candles and photographs and knickknacky bits and a lamp and a thing. And a, and then somebody actually wants to put uh, get some tissues and they can't put them anywhere because it's so chock-a-block with all these decorative items, but which also makes it look very, very busy. But yeah, I agree. I think that you need to allow a bedside table. So you've got to go two ways with this. So it's either a bedside table that is largely decorative with beautiful things on it that look nice and you don't really need space for other things like medication like um phones and chargers and books and things like that but you can't really do both like yeah. i'm not i'm not averse to people having beautiful things on the bedside table far from it but it, you know it needs to allow space for both and so think about those things i say we just see it every day and it just we, we stop seeing it right yeah yeah. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? Because we do become clutter blind. If you have a house with a lot of stuff, you just can't see the clutter anymore. And I think when you, your bedroom is such an important room in the house to get right and to, because sleep is so important. I mean, we, because we're so busy, we've eroded ourselves of sleep and it's crucial in our busy lives to have a lot of sleep. And I, I'm talking to myself here as well. I really, really, really need to be better at going to bed. But at least I get a solid good hours of sleep and because I don't wake up in the middle of the night and everything yet. So I think having a calm bedroom can do so much good for your soul and for your mind and for feeling calm and, and relaxing. And if you have a lots of clutter around your bed and it's almost like you have to rest on yourself into your bed and, and and rummage through all the stuff in your bedside table all the time, that is not helpful for you. So I think, well, I mean, we've been laughing our way through this podcast, but I think our message really is really important to go look at that, think about that, just minimize it a little bit because it will really benefit you. Yeah, you've just you've just kind of projected ahead to what I might have to look forward to in a few years, which is a menopausal Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Leslie, I'm not looking forward to that. Even I am I am I'm already like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I know. When you said it, I was like, oh no. Like, you know what I mean? This is gonna like go to bed late and then wake up in the middle of the night and be really, really grumpy. Oh my gosh. I, but I anyway, mm. that is our 10 things you to declutter from your bedside table. So hopefully between the laughter, um, it has been useful. The most important thing is don't worry about what we have said. But think about your bedside table, maybe do that this weekend as a project and think, you know what, it's popped it into my mind. Why don't I tackle that bedside table? Often people have got two as well. So whether you're on your own or whether you're with a partner, sometimes there are two bedside tables as there might be more than one. But make sure you've got you keep that to an absolute minimum so that it's the useful thing that it should be. And as always, let us know. What have you found? You, we want it. We want to know this. Have you found anything from our ten things list, or have you found other random stuff that you're like, "Wow, I would have expected you to talk about this, that, or the other, and you didn't." Ah, and I've got this in my bedside table. So, thank you so much. We appreciate you so much listening in week in week out, and um, yeah, we'll be back next week. See you then. See you later. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week.